Now, I know I was gonna be a Nissan guy here, but welcome to the channel, today's video. Just wanna give you guys a quick little update to the Nissan Xterra off-road project. We're also gonna do an update to the channel as well. The Nissan Xterra is road legal now. Got it all finished up, wrapped up. Whoa, whoa chill, 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 chill. We'll, we'll get to the update to the channel, you know? I know I talked a little smack about some of you Yoda fanboys and girls out there. When a deal comes up, you just follow me. I wanna show you guys a little update to the channel as well. So yes, I did hate a little bit on these FJ Cruisers. It was too good of a deal to pass up on. It's in our driveway now, but before, before we go there, here, let's, let's, let's go back to this Nissan, you know, cause, cause I, I kind of committed to, to the Nissan fan base out here. So here it is. This is the Nissan Xterra. Now, the first thing you'll notice, it's got the old front fascia on it. And the reasoning for that is because we picked up a parts truck, Nissan Xterra. That one's a 2000, what is it? 2006. That's a 2006 Nissan Xterra. I couldn't complain. Got the whole thing for like 500 bucks. It was only like two or three hours away and it was silver so I didn't have to paint anything. Cool thing about these Xterras, the front fascia, the second gens, any of the second gens the front fascia matches. Everything bolts right up. I just wanted to get it road legal so that I could drive it on the highway and whatnot just to make sure that drivetrain wise it was decent before I started throwing money at suspension. Let's talk a little bit about the suspension. I was planning to do a Titan swap on this. That's the whole thing where you do the upper lower control arms from the Nissan Titan. Basically converts it to like a mid travel kit gets you like an extra three inches on each side. But now that we have that thing, I kind of want to concentrate my build to that as well. Let me show you what I did with the Xterra. The Xterra, the apron was damaged right here. So underneath this air box was like kind of crushed in. I decided to go ahead and cut the apron off the parts truck Xterra, get it on here, welded it up, cleaned up the seam, got everything lined up and you know for the most part it's decent got it runs and drives great four-wheel drive works i'm having an issue trying to engage the rear diff lock but i think it's i think i just need to clean out some sludge in the rear differential four high four low works sound system in this thing is pretty dope as well a subwoofer right underneath your bum bum look at me talking like a dad you know such a dad now Figured out the off-road lights, by the way. I thought they were out. All you need to do is get your high beams on. And for some reason, it was hard to figure this out. So if you turn on the high beams, boom. <laughs> all right. And there's ways where you could bypass it if you want to get all four lights or two, four, six, six lights gone. The Xterra is wrapped up. I think the route we're going to go is maybe like a suspension lift, like a Bilstein 5100 lift kit. Not gonna go too crazy with it. Beefier tires, obviously. Oh, another cool thing. I found a Nissan Pathfinder off-road bumper for this. An off-road winch bumper, actually. I think they're like 15 or 1600 bucks. I'm still having a hard time trying to figure out the brand. Winch bumper, 140 bucks. I'm not gonna complain. Even though it's for a Pathfinder, bolted right up to this. Uh, it is adjustable, so I can bring it up a little higher. I'll probably insert an image to show what the mock-up mounting looked like. That being said, that's the Nissan Xterra. Should we uh, go on to the Yota? The Yota! Okay, so right. the next topic of the video and the main topic is the update to the channel. We acquired a 2008 Toyota FJ Cruiser. This does have 330,000 miles on it, but to these things, that's eh, whatever. Yes, I did hate on these. Did I hate on these FJ Cruisers? A bit. Uh, I mean, but I hated more on the Jeeps than I did on the FJ Cruiser, so. Okay, let's put it this way. These FJ Cruisers have a special place in my heart okay my main thing come back over here my main thing with the fj cruisers uh especially because you know someone like me i have kids i like being able to open the back windows have my you know two kids look out the windows if we're going off-roading or sightseeing and whatnot that's pretty much my main thing it's just like my beef with coupes versus sedans i'm more of a sedan guy my fast car is a sedan it's a pontiac g8 versus like a corvette i got nothing against corvettes but i do have stuff against jeep guys I'll probably never get into a Jeep unless it's a crazy stupid deal, right? Even though it, that, that's an exception. You know, you got a good deal on that. It's a Eco Diesel, it's a Grand Cherokee, but it's not mine, it's, it's, it's yours. It's the, the camera guy. But before I continue to the FJ Cruiser here, I just wanna talk a little bit about the off-road community, especially here in Michigan. If you are in the Michigan area or around the Michigan area, I guess any of the surrounding states, and you are interested in getting into the off-road scene or already in the off-road scene, but you're just looking for cool laid back community that is 
family friendly. I highly recommend Derek and the group that he created is called Mitten State Tours on Facebook. I'll go ahead and insert a link to their Facebook group in the description down below. Derek Vispro, check him out on Instagram. Mitten State Tours, check him out. I'll go ahead and insert all their links and whatnot. I've always wanted a rig with a tire carrier from the factory, and finally, I've got one. One thing the FJ Cruiser and the Xterra has in common, <laughs> they were both hit right here. No, not that one, that one. Uh, this one, the damage isn't too bad. I think he was trying to pull out of his like neighborhood and somebody just hit him. Took the tire out. Luckily, we had the spare tire from our GX470 laying around. I knew for some reason, like it was, it was a sign that we needed to keep this. I almost got rid of this wheel and tire, but uh, I kept this thing for the tire than the wheel. Came in clutch today, literally put a tire on, or the wheel and tire on, and we drove it here, 45 minute drive. He did send me pictures before we went out to go see it. We weren't expecting to buy it. We just we were just like, hey, it's only like 40 minutes away. Let's go check it out, see what we're missing out on. When you see a picture with something like this and a little bit of rust on the bottom, I think they took a picture at night. And so like when you take a picture at night with the flash on, it really puts a lot of emphasis on the rust on the bottom. Kind of scared us a little bit, but we we're like, yeah, let's just go check it out. We came to check it out. And sure enough, it's all mainly like surface area rust on the, the frame. The body, super clean. Now I can't open the door all the way because the fender is pushed back, but surprisingly, this body doesn't, it really doesn't have a speck of rust on it. Check out all the door jams. Interior is super clean. Uh, one thing I love about the Toyotas versus like the Nissan is we actually have a, like a physical lever for the four wheel drive control. That's super annoying in the Nissan, you know, in my, in my past experience, I've had a Nissan Titan, Nissan Xterra, and if like as simple as an ABS sensor goes out on those cars, it'll disengage your four wheel drive. Super annoying. Then you come back here, it's got the glass that opens up, but to open this, I need the key and the car's on. I don't feel like reaching out there, but swing out door and it's got the, the feature where it locks out. This isn't the fully loaded model. It doesn't have the subwoofer. I know the, the subwoofer was something my brother was hoping we'd find in this. I'll take a rear diff locker over a subwoofer, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Anyways, we come back over here. Super clean. What do they call this? Is this like suicide doors, like a Rolls Royce? Yeah. Catch me in my Rolly. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's cool about these FJ Cruisers is the floor mats or the flooring is like all rubber, when Toyota designed this vehicle, they designed it to be rugged, per se. You get mud on this, just wipe it out. Let's get up underneath. Got a little dent here, but you know, we'll call it trail injuries. Or what do you call it? Character. I like that. You're picking up on stuff, little bro. If you look at the frame, it is pretty, pretty solid for a Michigan car. Uh, you know, a Michigan Toyota, let's put it that way. Uh, the GX470 that I had in the past, that 04, or was it 04 or 03? 03. Yeah, the 03 GX470 that I had in the past was so rotted out that you could literally take your finger, you didn't even need a screwdriver and you could poke right through the frame rails. Uh, this one, frame's pretty solid, all surface, pretty much surface rust. And I was surprised that it wasn't as rusty as I thought it would be, especially for someone who lives on like a dirt road. Check out the side as well. Now, I don't know if it looks worse on video, but I promise it's it's mainly like surface character. I've always had a thing about the front end of these cars. Kind of looks like a Jeep slash Hummer. I don't know if you're familiar with like the older Toyotas, like the FJ40. You see them in the Middle East all the time. I like the the the, the Toyota heritage style front grille. It pays homage to the to the old school Toyota look check out underneath the hood. Let's take a quick little look at the apron here. Really doesn't look that bad. I'm pretty sure I could just pull that back out and get it cleaned up. I think structure wise, it should be fine for what we're gonna use it for. It is a body on frame, so all the suspension is mounted to the frame. The frame wasn't touched, so at least we got that going for us. Drove pretty straight for the most part on the way here. Obviously there's some things that will need to be replaced like bearing and whatnot. I'm planning to do full suspension on this anyways. And we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the video. Probably gonna finish up the video with a quick little B-roll of these two things. Go ahead and drop a comment down below. Let me know if you like these kind of videos. I'm trying to get into more of like a vlogging slash 
you know, updating the channel. I am still planning to do detailed how-to videos whenever it is needed. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. And with that being said, we're gonna finish up the video, so see you in the next one.